Uh, now I'm glad to open uh, for discussions, uh, but if you prefer to leave to get your uh, lunch, but there are so many out there, so you can sit here for another 20 minutes, you will have the sandwiches afterwards. So uh, if the speakers will come up uh, here in front, then I'll be glad to give the word to the floor. Who would, has a question, a remark about the presentations we've heard? Uh, hello, my name is Pippa Kelly, and uh, I'm a writer. Um, I've had my pieces published on all sorts of things, actually, in all, you know, most national papers in England, the Times, the Sunday Express, the Guardian, the Sunday Telegraph, so it's a range of different sorts of uh, media, and I've been on the radio. Um, but I'm also the daughter of somebody who had dementia, so I started to write about my own experiences of dementia with my mum. Um, and the first piece I wrote was in 2006, and I'm very ashamed now to admit that I used the word demented. Um, I didn't do it with any, you know, I didn't, it was about my mum, so obviously I wouldn't have said it to cause offence. But I think that shows that what I feel in the time that I've been writing about dementia now is that we're in a period of transition, and there's still a heck of a lot of misunderstanding and confusion, ignorance and stigma among the general public. Um, but I think it is beginning to change slowly, and it is people like me and the writers and the journalists who are going to do it. Um, there was a, I don't know if anybody else heard it, but there was a piece um, a few months ago on the Today program, um, which is a flagship current affairs program in the UK, and the main veteran presenter, John Humphreys, um, said he was going to do a piece about dementia, so my ears pricked up. And it was two people with dementia. And they were given the very prestigious 810 slot on the Today program, which is normally reserved for the Prime Minister, the Chancellor, the CEO of a FTSE 100 company. And it was given to two people with dementia. And it was very good. And the first thing, really, that John Humphrey said when he was introduced to Linda, the lady with dementia, was, well, you are so far removed from the normal stereotype of somebody with dementia that I really don't know where to start, which was unusual for John Humphreys. But I suppose not treating you as a victim is a good way to start. And um, he was doing that in front of 7 million listeners, so I think that was, very, that was very good. Then on the website, the iPlayer website, unfortunately, uh, of the BBC, they used the word victim. So I think that shows how, although we are beginning to make the transition, we're in it. We're, we aren't through it yet. But um, I think the best advocates are the people with dementia. I'm a great believer in that. Um, and that's what I try and do when I write about them. But Thank you very much. I'm glad you had time to say what you wanted to. And bravo for talking about your mother. And best regards to her from all of us. <laughs> you wanted to have, make a comment or ask a question? Um, it was just to thank Deep for <clears throat> publishing guidelines to do with language. Yeah. Um, as someone who uh, is a daughter of someone with the men's who campaigns and our picture was up and a, a, a friend of Nancy's, um, I'm aware that the people with dementia hate the word sufferer and when I hear the word, it, I have a physical reaction. So if we can actually, we are in a period of transition, if we can get the professionals to stop using it and the, the poor gentleman from the Council of Europe used it eight times in his speech, because I was counting. <laughs> um, but I, as a carer and having someone in, and know people in the caring who, who care, if we can get the professionals not to use it and the people with dementia won't use it, and some of the carers are not sure, you know, there's still a bit of discussion. Um, I, as a carer, hate the word, um, but I know that there's still... And there was a man last night who said my mother suffered from dementia and I, I had no right to go up to a man and say, because that's his experience. But if we get the professionals not to use the words, that's a great start. But 
I also, um, the working group, have challenged some of the articles. And what we have been told is it is usually the editors who pick the headlines. So like that, the, the Mr Pratchett's story, there was a similar story in the Metro in Glasgow. The article was positive, the picture was positive, and the headline used the word sufferer. Thank you. Does anyone want to yeah. comment? Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I think the best way is that uh, you send them, uh, send them the right words and you ask them not to use mm. the words they are sorry to use it. So I think they are all good enough to know. <laughs> so it's very simple. Uh, I should say that when we organise our conferences, we do actually send out information, Alzheimer Europe, we send out information and we ask people if they could try to avoid using, well not try to, if they could avoid using words like suffering and demented, but unfortunately it still occurs and we still keep trying to, to encourage people not to, but we, it's almost like a form of policing, but we try to do that. <laughs> Yes, thank, thank you for your comments, Pippa and, and Donna. I think it, it's very true, you know, we're, we're in a time, and this is not going to happen overnight, but things are changing. And uh, I would never suggest that just by focusing on language and images, um, we will make that whole change. There's lots of things that have to be all moving along together. There's awareness raising, there's listening to people with dementia, speaking, there's research evidence, there's practice evidence, and there's thinking about language and images. But I think, you know, if we all keep helping to push all those things along, we will all move forward. And I'd really, I, I think, um, you know, it's right, we need to have a very kind of nuanced campaign, really, with the media and think about journalists and writers, but also editors and sub-editors and presenters on local radio as well as on national radio. And um, when, we, when Deep launches the, the call to action, um, which will probably be very early next year through the Dementia Action Alliance, it would be fantastic to get partners um, who are knowledgeable about, about this field who can really help us to make an impact. Thank you. Do you want to tell us about your suffering? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you for really raising the subject, and I think it's important, uh, probably you know me, I'm Heike von Lutzer Holbein, the chair of ISAMA Europe, and wouldn't it be a nice idea with the things that just Donna told us in counting the words of the, the words uh, suffering by the Secretary of State yesterday in his speech, wouldn't it be nice if the Scottish Dementia Group of, for people with dementia would really Thank the, uh, the Secretary of State of his speech, for his speech, but also recommend that in his next speech, you would appreciate if he would not use this word again, then you would really get an influence there and you would really get an influence to the people really preparing the speech because he didn't do it himself. <laughs> I think that would be a good idea. Do you, thank you, Heike. Do you really think he didn't make his own speech? He, <laughs> He didn't have any notes. Do you want to say something? I will come over to you. Are you suffering? I'm not. You're not? <laughs> okay. with um, dementia. Hi. Um, my name is Tony uh, from Manchester. My wife um, is living with dementia and living well with dementia. We were recently invited to the House of Commons to help or to, to, to be there at the launch of Dementia Friendly Parliament. And John Burko, um, speaker, gave a speech. Then the deputy speaker gave a speech to which he referred to people suffering from dementia. Now, my wife was standing about three or four feet away from him. I managed to stop her from going straight up to him there. <laughs> but very soon after, once he finished, she approached him very gently, um, was introduced by our local MP, and she pointed out that people living with dementia, don't like the word suffering because it's negative, it's so negative. Yeah. My, li my wife wants to be positive. We're part of a dementia-friendly community. We want to work in that way. 
and he was so apologetic, it was amazing. Um, for the deputy speaker to actually, well, he cringed when he realized what he'd done. He apologized profusely and promised faithfully never to use that word again. And I, th I think if we, as people living with dementia or caring for someone who's living with dementia, are able to just go up and talk to our politicians in a friendly way and just say, please, don't use that word again, mm -hmm. they will respond because they will realize how much hurt it causes. One more hand. Well, anyone can leave when you want to. Huh? <laughs> I'm just going to uh, go on, and if you want to leave to have, uh, that's okay. We we continue here. <laughs> okay. um, my name's Anna Devine. I'm a relatively new director of fundraising and marketing for Alzheimer's Scotland. I have a request for um, people. Obviously, a lot of you people have a lot more knowledge of dementia than I do. Um, and particularly to those living with dementia, perhaps you could help those of us who were suffering from ignorance of dementia. And um, I've had a little bit therapeutic intervention from coming to work with Alzheimer Scotland, but I think it's a case of everybody helping everyone. And if you can just bear with us while we go through this transition, and us who have been suffering from ignorance of dementia, we would welcome your your approach and <laughs> help and certainly those keywords are definitely going to be really helpful certainly for us developing our future campaigns. That was very well said. We'll remember that. Hello, we're three people with dementia here and very in varying thing. I was diagnosed in February 2010. And you? Oh, she's not sure. She's probably soon after me, and, and this lady is the, baby in our, in the, is the baby in our group. Our question really is, a very short discussion here, is what on earth difference to the public out there? Will their attitude to people with dementia, what will happen if the name is changed? If people then start referring it to as Alzheimer's or something else or whatever? And we're all, we three are nurses, so we've a long long experience in all branches of nursing behind us. And I'm so, I think that, this, is, this, that this, this point is going to be belabored and we're going to go spend a lot of money on changing papers and everything else and advertising it and we could use that on something else much more down to earth. Thank you. Thank you. That was a very strong word and um I will remember. <laughs> Agnes, are you suffering? Only from professionals. <laughs> I've got a pain somewhere, you know. <laughs> but anyway, sorry. I'm sorry I wasn't here. As I said, my heart was here. But I'll get in here as soon as I stop presenting next door. But my last word next door was a challenge. And it was a challenge to everyone to write to the organizers of this conference only if you heard the word, as indeed lots of people have come up and told me where one presenter used the word sufferer in his plenary session. I wasn't there. I was resting. Yes, some people, the word is it's, it's because this is a European conference. It's hard when you're speaking a different language, to translate it into another word, you know? But, you know, when they say you're demented or you've got um, things, you know, like that, it can be insulting. We done it when it was discrimination against we do not go up and say that people are black or they're chinky or what have you. That, we done that because we were ignorant to begin with, mm -hmm. and then once we got told how derogatory it was, we then tried to change it. So little by little, and I agree with my Irish friend here um, about money should be put where it means the most. And you know, when I was working in the NHS, if I had the money that they spent every time they changed their brand and their color, <laughs> 
So think carefully, work smart, uh, but you know we're all on the same page. We're wanting change for the best. So thank you, and I'm sorry I missed my friend Nancy. <laughs> Oh, she did very well without you, Agnes. <laughs> uh, we're not allowed to stay here any longer because they have to open up because it's going to be changed for uh, this afternoon. So thank you and bravo to all the speakers. You, you were really great. It was a pleasure.